Hello and welcome everyone to the inaugural session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series. My name is Carissa Smith, as many of, of you I'm sure know, and I am the partner specialist working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service offering and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit uh, their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. I'm joined today by Christy Searle, who will be assisting me in hosting today's session. If any of you have any technical issues during uh, the course of today's demo, please just send her a chat via the chat feature located on the bottom right of your screen. There's a little conversation bubble next to it, so you can hit enter to send your chat message. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled. Obviously, you can hear me, I can't hear you. But I do heartily encourage participation through the chat feature. Um, you can certainly send questions as I'm demoing today or hold them at the end for questions and there will be more than ample enough time at the end to address all of, all of your concerns and questions as I go along. So with that opener, um, I'd like to uh, get today's session started. I hope you're all enjoying a nice lunch if it is lunchtime where you are located. Um, as you all have noted on the screen in front of you, today's uh, session will talk about the new permissions and access control features available in the newest release of DuraCloud. And hold on one moment while I stop sharing this and move to share my screen. All right, so <clears throat> I wanted to start today's session um, with the DuraCloud Management Console. So I'm going to back up for just a moment for those of you who aren't familiar with DuraCloud, um, specifically the managed service that we offer. Um, if you were to be a customer of our, of our DuraCloud service, we would set up an own independent DuraCloud instance for you, and you would have your own unique URL, which would be a, a web application that sits on top of your DuraCloud content, where you can run services, add, update, delete content, etc. And we also have this additional web application known as the Management Console, and it's located at manage.duracloud.org. <clears throat> and this is really where we need to start um, when we talk about permissions and access controls. Um, as the name of the Management Console implies, it allows you to do management type activities on top of your Dura, Dura Cloud instance. So I'm going to log in here. Um, <clears throat> of course, you can create your own profile if you so choose here, but I won't log you, uh, walk you through that process today. Assuming my screen catches up here. So logging into the Management Console, you'll be greeted with a couple pieces of information, so I just want to orient you uh, to the interface that you're seeing right now. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the host name. This is the DuraCloud instance URL that uh, this test user, keep in mind I'm logging in as test, uh, has access to. And if you were a customer of, of DuraCloud, your instance would be located at uh, your institution named at duracloud.org. That would be something that you could configure uh, upon signing up. You can certainly uh, link directly to your DuraCloud instance via this uh, launch button. Um, and there's some other information about your DuraCloud instance uh, available to you in the Management Console. Um, I'm not going to cover all of it today because I think that's outside of the bounds of what we're talking about. But two uh, capabilities within this Management Console that are important to permissions and access controls. Uh, the first is this Manage Users and Roles button. So I'm just going to click on that. It's located in the right-hand side of your screen, the middle button. And this allows you to add users uh, to have access to your DuraCloud instance. In other words, they can log in and add content, edit content, etc. And this is where um, pretty much you start with the permissions capabilities you need to have users to either give permissions to or restrict permissions from. Uh, at the top of your window you'll see a list of active users and this is the uh, list of users who can log into your DuraCloud instance. <clears throat> you can see uh, as you move from left to right obviously some of their information as well as the role that they've been assigned. Most of the users in this list are uh, assigned the role user um, there are two other roles, however, one uh, being administrator and the other being an account owner. And I wanted to point out that uh, my test user that I logged in with is an account uh, owner at this point. And I can, as an account owner, update uh, any of these users to a different role, administrator or owner, if I so choose. 
Um, the difference between all of these, which I will uh, go more in depth with once we get into your actual DuraCloud instance, um, is that users, uh, you can restrict uh, their permissions. You can restrict it by a DuraCloud space, which I will show uh, in just a little while. Users cannot run services within DuraCloud, so they have restricted capabilities in terms of what they can do with your content. Um, however, an administrator or an account owner has, uh, as you might imagine, complete control over your DuraCloud instance. So both an owner and an administrator can add and update content, restrict users' permissions, run services, etc. I mean, they are the administrators of the account. So it's really the users that we're restricting permissions uh, based on. Scrolling down just a moment, um, how do you actually get active users in this list? Um, we leverage, we being the management console and DuraCloud team, uh, leverage an invitation process. So as an account owner or an administrator, I would simply insert the email address of the user I'd like to invite uh, here in this box and click the invite button. What happens uh, directly after that, after you click the invite button, is that the system generates a, an invitation email that is then sent to that user. Within the invitation are instructions on how uh, a user would go about redeeming that invitation. Um, first, it would suggest that they create account, an account if they don't already have one. This is a personal user profile, a login. And then there is a unique URL string within that email that the user must click on. And essentially what it does is it ties that email address to this individual DuraCloud instance. So in this case, it's a demo DuraCloud instance. Um, so our system knows to tie that user to that particular DuraCloud instance. And the un uh, unique URL is indeed unique to that individual uh, email um, and that user. So assuming a user redeems your invitation, they will then um, be listed in this active users area, and they're automatically set the role of user. Um, and then you as an account owner or an administrator can boost their permissions to uh, an administrator or fellow owner if you so choose to do so, or just uh, leave them as a user. One thing that I skipped over here at the bottom of your screen, let me scroll down momentarily, is this pending users area. And essentially, this is just a list of all invitations that have yet to be redeemed. So uh, users who have an invitation email sitting in their inbox that they haven't acted upon. And over here on the right of your screen, you'll see a little expiration uh, note. And uh, DuraCloud invitations do expire after about three weeks. Um, we don't leave those unique URLs sitting out there in, in people's inboxes for overly long. Um, but after it expires, you can certainly just uh, resubmit the user's email into the um, into the system and, and regenerate an invitation. Uh, that's not a problem. So scrolling back up on the screen, um, sorry, I'm popping around uh, on this uh, section just a, just a tad. The last bit of capability here that I wanted to go over today is the remove from account capability. Obviously, it's relatively straightforward. You would remove um, a user and their permission to access your DuraCloud instance if you click this button. Um, I just wanted to underscore the difference in that it doesn't delete their profile. So if I removed this first uh, row, clicked remove from account, uh, username ctest would no longer be able to log into demo.duracloud.org, but they could certainly still log into the management console um, and change their password and, and stuff. Um, their profile would still exist. They just wouldn't have access to your DuraCloud instance. So that's really the main difference between removing and, and deleting, I suppose. So a relatively straightforward way to add users and then update their roles within the management console. And the last piece, and I guess the second step, um, not necessarily a mandatory step, but of interest if you uh, want to <clears throat> uh, give access permissions to a large group of people, is this manage groups capability. So of course you have to have users first, and then you can essentially group those users into, um, group them into groups. Um, so I'm going to click on the Manage uh, Groups button over here on the right part of the screen. And again, this is something you can choose to use uh, or not. Um, it's not. It is not mandatory. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a list of current groups that I've set up, um, one of them being the demo group, for instance. And if you want to see a list of participants or users that are members of this group, you simply click on it to select it, and you can know uh, you know it's selected uh, not only because the information about the group comes up on the right-hand side of your screen, but it also has a, a light gray highlight behind it. 
And you can see a list of uh, members of this group. Not really useful, it's just one member at this point. But if you click Edit, um, you'll be presented with a list of all of the other active users that we saw uh, just in the screen prior to this in the active users area. And you can decide to add uh, users uh, to the list um, to be members of this demo group. And uh, one thing I'll note, the handy dandy multi-select capability also uh, within our interface. So you don't, do, you don't have to add just one user at a time if you have a long list of users. Um, and certainly once they're listed here on the additional side, um, if you wanted to remove someone, you certainly can do that. And that's also multi-select, both adding and removing. And then obviously you want to save those changes that you've made to this group. And you'll see that the uh, members of the group are now updated. Uh, again, relatively straightforward to add a group. That's over here on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, you simply enter a, a group name, click Add Group, and then again, the interface is exactly the same here on the right-hand side of your screen. You'll be able to select uh, as many participants, uh, users as you'd like, and then add them to that group. And again, click Save or Remove Them, etc. So again, really easy to add groups and then configure uh, the members of the groups. If, for, uh, for instance, you want to delete a group, for instance, this DRMCPTF group, you simply click the checkbox uh, directly to the left of the group name and click Remove Selected. And that will remove that group um, from this interface. So with that, um, that's really the, the setting the stage for the permissions that we will assign once we get into the DuraCloud instance itself. Um, just to kind of recap, you add users to your account and assign them appropriate roles. And then if you so choose, you can um, group, create groups, and then assign uh, different users to those groups. So with that, I'm going to log out of this interface. Um, and I'm going to go directly to the uh, demo.duracloud.org uh, DuraCloud instance. So again, I just navigated to this. Uh, via the URL in my browser. And I'm going to log in with the same username and password as I did before. I see there are questions coming up, so thanks everyone. Um, I will get to those at the end. <clears throat> so let me orient you first to this DuraCloud administrator interface. And that's really uh, what I've been calling the DuraCloud instance uh, web application that I mentioned earlier. And again, this is a web application that sits on top of your DuraCloud content, where, wherever it may be stored, which with, with whatever storage providers you choose when you sign up for the service. Um, it also allows you to run services on top of that content, um, et cetera. So here's, here's our lovely web application. Um, just again, to orient you to what you're seeing, uh, in the top left-hand part of your screen, you'll see four tabs. Uh, and this is how you navigate this interface. So uh, just quickly, uh, for, for reference, the Dashboard tab um, shows you statistics about your DuraCloud instance, um, the cumulative amount of content that you have stored, um, nice graphics um, with breakouts via space, via MIME type or file format, um, a list of historically all of the services you've run, uh, links to all of the service reports, et cetera. It's a really, really great um, snapshot of your DuraCloud instance and, and the history of, of your DuraCloud instance. The Spaces tab, which is automatically open when you log into your DuraCloud instance, is um, actually your DuraCloud content. Spaces is a term we use to describe content containers, content buckets. Um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the desktop, uh, desktop terminology, you could think of it as a file folder. Um, although we don't have quite the hierar hierarchical structure you would uh, be used to with file folders, it's similar. It's a content container. Um, a DuraCloud space is. And you can see the list of all of the spaces here uh, on the left-hand side of your screen on the leftmost column. Just quickly going over the rest of the tabs, um, to uh, the right of the Spaces tab is the Services tab. And this uh, allows you, as, a, as an owner or an administrator account, uh, to run services over your content, whether it be health checks of your content or uh, media streaming, image serving, or uh, bulk duplication and synchronization type services uh, are all available in DuraCloud. And then uh, the rightmost tab is the administration tab. And this just allows you to see all the users uh, who have access to your DuraCloud instance. It's essentially the same list as the active users you saw in the management console. 
So moving back to the heart of the demo with all of the background information out of the way. To uh, select a space, you simply click on it to select it. And then again, I'll orient you to what you're seeing. Uh, in the middle uh, of your screen in the content items panel, uh, you'll be presented with all of the content items that are currently held within the space you've selected. So this Carissa Images space currently has uh, 12 content items. And then on the right hand side of your screen is the, the detail panel. And depending on what you've selected within DuraCloud, it will show uh, different things. Because we have a space selected, you'll see the space detail. If I were to choose one of these content items and select it, so my Jane Austen GIF image, for example, you'll see that the detail panel now changes to the content detail on the right hand side of your screen. So I'm just going to go back to uh, highlighting a space because that is where um, we will edit the permissions. So uh, I'll note that permissions are on a space basis or a file folder basis if, if you're more comfortable with that terminology. So we restrict or open up um, permissions and access to content on the space level within DuraCloud at this point in time. And the permissions, I'm going to go on the right side, hand side of my screen now, the permissions that you can then edit are available within this space detail and it's directly underneath uh, the name of the space and this delete space button. You can see right now that for this Carissa Images space, it is uh, open to the public for read access. The demo group and the members of that demo group have read and write access to this space and an individual user named T. Donnie who can also read this space. So what exactly do, does that mean, what I just said? So when the public has read access to a space, it means that the content items held within that space are essentially available to the public to access and to read. Every single content item that is uh, stored within DuraCloud has a URL, a unique URL that's associated with it. And if it's in a public space, you can pass out that URL to uh, friends if you wish, or probably more interesting is that you can embed those URLs into your own applications and essentially use DuraCloud to serve your content, whether it's a streaming media file, it's embedding an image in our image, um, <clears throat> uh, image serving capability, or a document, for instance, we can certainly serve documents as well. So if it's in the public and the read access is enabled, uh, you can just give that URL out and people can access the content. If, uh, if the public does not have read access to a space, um, and what I like to say is the space is closed or it's dark, the URLs for those content items are still in existence. However, if someone tried to access them, they would be presented with the DuraCloud login screen. So they would not only have to have a DuraCloud login to get into your DuraCloud instance, but they would also need to be either a member, member of uh, a group or a particular user that you had given access to, um, to view and manipulate that content item. So that is uh, kind of an overview of opening up read access to the public or not and making it a dark, a dark space, essentially. So uh, with that, let me just explain how you would edit uh, the current permissions and then add new ones if you so choose to do that. Um, if you click edit here in the permissions area, here I'm on the right hand side of the screen just in case you can't follow my mouse. Um, if I click edit, I can change any of the current settings, any of the permissions that are available. So if I wanted to uh, remove this T. Donahue user um, from his read access from my Carissa Images space, I would simply click save. And then you would see that only the public and the demo group have access to uh, this content. If I wanted to add uh, another group or another user, etc., cetera, um, I clicked the add button. That was the rightmost button on the screen. And then I can choose to uh, add another group if I wanted to or add an individual user. And again, you can restrict to just read access or open it up to read and write. And let me, and I, I didn't mention, and I probably should now, the difference between read and write if in, in DuraCloud land. Um, reading a content item means that you can see the space, you can see the list of content items, um, you can download the content items, but that is essentially all you can do. You can't add new content items, um, you can't change the properties of the content items, you can't delete the content items. Um, essentially all you can do is, is view them. If you have write access on a space in DuraCloud, you can add content, you can change the properties of content, you can delete the space entirely if you'd like. Um, you have a lot more uh, full-featured capabilities uh, with a space uh, if you have write access to it. 
So I'm just going to save these changes and then you can automatically see them listed here in the permissions area. And again, this is something that you do, uh, you can change at any point in time and it will automatically retroactively apply to all of the content in this space. So if this JJ Markow user now logged in, he would now have access to this Carissa Images uh, space and see all of my 12 uh, supposed images, though I don't think they're all images, um, when he logged in. So it's, it takes place uh, automatically. To add a space uh, into this interface, you simply click the Add Space uh, button here in the top left-hand part of your screen. And let me show you how to do this. Um, I'm going to add a test space. You simply name it whatever you'd like to, to name it. And you can also set whether um, it's accessible to the public or not right off the bat. That's something that we, uh, we've heard from our current customers is, is a nice uh, capability that they can, you know, right off the bat um, decide whether they want public access to a space or not. And again, that's something you can toggle on and off at any point in time. Uh, we, don't, we don't restrict you uh, at the beginning of adding a space and you're not married to that decision. So I'm actually going to restrict access to this space. This is going to be a dark space. <clears throat> and I simply clicked add and then you'll automatically see it added down here this space at the bottom of your screen and again I'm going to go move back to the detail panel and you can see that because I test user created this space I automatically have read and write access to it but no one else does um, to easily make the space publicly readable um, and publicly accessible we do add a little button if it isn't um, already a publicly uh, open to the public space. So if you just click that button, for instance, you can make uh, the space open to the public. However, I'm going to actually edit that and take off uh, both of those capabilities for all of these users. And I'm only going to allow my C test user to read and write on this space. So I named it C test space and I'm giving it um, just the user C test the ability to read and write to this space. And I'm going to log in as a user in just a moment and show you what this interface looks like from a user perspective who has restricted permissions. Um, because I wanted to note that one of the major use cases we're trying to, um, to help with by allowing um, institutions to add permissions like this to our cloud customers is that um, you can restrict access to a space uh, on a student by student basis. So if you wanted to open up your DuraCloud account for a class, uh, for instance, you could create an individual space per student and then assign uh, a, each student permissions to just that space so that they would only see uh, their DuraCloud space. They wouldn't be able to access the other student spaces. And this is also great for uh, institutions who want to share their DuraCloud instance with other departments. They could create a couple departmental spaces, create a departmental group, say the physics department for instance, and then uh, people, members of that depart uh, physics departmental group would only see the spaces that the physics department has access to. So you could really use this to uh, share your DuraCloud instance amongst your entire institution and, and feel confident that there would be no snooping amongst content or uh, content lost if you, if you wanted to do that. So with that background, I'm going to log out for just one moment, keeping in mind that the interface that we just saw was um, with test user logged in and test user is the owner of the account. Uh, now I'm going to log in as this C test user and show you what the, the um, interface looks like. You can see that it's, it's certainly simplified and there's a lot less that C test uh, user can do. In particular, I'll note that up here in the navigation area, a user can't run services nor the, can they see uh, additional users who have access to the system. You can see for two of these spaces, uh, when I click on them, I only have read access as the C test user. So as I mentioned, I can see the list of items. And if I click on one of these items, I can download it, but I certainly uh, can't delete it and I cannot uh, add any other content to this space because I only have read access to it. However, my C test space that we had just set up uh, looks a little substantially different. I can delete the space entirely. I can add content. If there were content in here, I could delete it. Um, I can add properties and tags on both the space level and the content item level. Um, again, um, this is just kind of to show you the difference between read access, uh, which is the Carissa images and Carissa upload space, 
versus read and write access on the C-test space, which is much more fleshed out in terms of the capabilities. And again, uh, that was just because we restricted uh, the C-test user to only have write access to this one space. So with that, uh, that's a really high level overview of the new permissions and access controls features uh, within DuraCloud. And because I wanted these brown bag sessions to be informal and short, not take up everybody's entire lunch time, I am going to open up the floor for questions. I'll log out of this and I will bring up the interface so I can answer your questions. Of which I see two, so I'll uh, address Mike, Mike's question first. What are your plans for supporting federated authentication and providing APIs for managing provisioning of users, groups, etc.? So the DuraCloud REST API already, I believe, handles uh, the ability to add users and groups. Um, the DuraCloud REST APIs are, are fully fleshed out and you can do a lot of, well, pretty much everything uh, with them that I showed you within the interface today. Um, I'm not technically savvy enough to show you how to do that via the APIs, but it is available. Federated authentication, I'm not exactly familiar with, Mike, but I will mention that um, we're going to start, it's on the roadmap, um, to start integrating uh, shibboleth authentication and authorization. Um, coming up within the next two DuraCloud releases, it will be available uh, at some point uh, this year. Um, but that's really as much as I know about uh, authentication and authorization at this point. Uh, Linda asks, is there a way to create an account, whether tagged as user or admin, to upload content to one space and not others, and run services such as BitIntegrity Checker against one space and not others? Let me process this question for a minute. <clears throat> so you can certainly restrict um, users, not admins, just users, to upload content to one space and not others like I just showed. However, no user can run services, only account administrators and owners. And at this point, you can't restrict an administrator to certain spaces at this point. Um, keep in mind, this is just our, our first offering of permissions and access controls, and I do believe even more fine-grained um, permissions controls based on administrator and owner um, will be forthcoming. But right now, you can only restrict uh, access if, uh, um, if users are having the role user and no user can run services. All right, our next question, is there a grant option for a user? That is, a user could grant access on a space or item to another group of users. Uh, no, unfortunately, there is not. A user cannot um, add or update any permissions uh, to another user. An administrator or an account owner would have to do that at this point. Um, but that might be something I can bring up with our technical team, essentially a user plus uh, that would then, a super user on a space who could uh, potentially add new users in so they wouldn't have to bug the account administrator or owner. Uh, good question. All right, the next question, giving the right permission to an individual for a space not only allows them to upload objects, but also gives them the option to delete the space, or is that reserved for individuals with a specific role? If you do have right, um, right access to a space as a user, you do have the ability to delete that space. So um, again, that's just a user who has right access on a space. Um, it's not restricted to any other specific role. Uh, Mike notes that, yes, shibboleth support and joining in common would be the right start to supporting federated authentication. And yes, that is on the roadmap, uh, Mike, and I hope that you're happy to hear that. Um, it should be available, like I said, uh, this year. We're pushing really hard, and development on the shibboleth uh, integration uh, has just started. So we are making uh, active steps in that direction. Any other questions from folks? I really appreciate your participation today, and I hope uh, it was helpful and not too painful. <laughs> um, I try to make my, my sessions as, as interactive as possible. Um, I have a couple more announcements if we don't have any other questions. Let me go back to my PowerPoint slide. One moment while it catches up here. So if there are no other questions, I will put in my, my blurb about free DuraCloud trial accounts. If any of this has piqued your curiosity and you are interested, please feel free to submit a trial account form uh, on our website at duracloud.org. You get a free Dur DuraCloud account under no obligation to continue for 60 days. 
Um, so if you're if you're at all interested, I would encourage you to do that. Again, it's it's a no obligation account, so you can try Aldera Cloud for 60 days and and walk away if you so choose, or uh, you might be so interested you continue on with our service. And then uh, the last thing I'll leave on the slide is that please stay tuned. If you thought today's session was helpful, we'll have another one on March 28th, topic TBD. So if you have a suggestion for a DuraCloud topic that you'd like to see me or one of our technical uh, architects cover or someone else um, out in the public who you think would be a good speaker, um, I would certainly be willing to invite other speakers to the session as well. So please send topic suggestions directly to me, csmith at duraspace.org. And of course, all information about DuraCloud, uh, the DuraCloud Brown Bag series is on our website at the link uh, on the screen in front of you. So thank you, everyone. If there are no other questions, I will let you all off the hook. I appreciate your participation today and, and hope today's session was useful. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon or rest of your morning, everyone. <laughs>